Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mars April Product of the Month webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about the 36B IDOD bench comparators. Hello, I'm your presenter, George Schutz, Director of Precision Gauges out of Providence, Rhode Island. And as we go through today's webinar, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, use the chat feature and I will respond to your question after the webinar by email. Today's agenda is we're going to learn about the 36B IDOD bench comparators by seeing what it is. We're going to talk about the 36B bench gauges through the ages, learn about its features, some accessories, applications, why you might need it, and discuss about the special promotion being the product of the month. So what is a 36B gauge? Well, it's a bench gauge that measures inside diameters, outside diameters, and it's switchable by rotating the top plate. So it can measure IDs, ODs, and then using the top plate can go either way. There's versions for two or three point measurements for matching up to the part form that we might be measuring. The gauge comes in two sizes, uh, a smaller version, which measures up to approximately five inches OD, or a larger version that can go up to about nine inches OD. And they come with selectable readout devices. You can use dial indicators, digital indicators being wired or wireless, or we can use LVDT transducers with standalone bench amplifiers or with a gauging PC running cockpit software. So lots of versatility in what the 36B gauge is. It's also something to keep in mind that it's a comparative gauge. It compares a part to a known master, thus you'll need a setting master when using the gauge. It has a tiltable table for the easiest use, and best viewing angle by the, uh, the person using the gauge. It has retractable jaws so you can easily put the part into place. It has adjustable gauging pressure of zero to eight pounds uh, so you can take care of thin walled parts or a little heavier parts that, that might need some centralization. It has a unique frictionless measuring system which we'll go into some detail on. And it has a locking mechanism that, when it's being transported, will protect the sensitive uh, frictionless measuring system. So how does a 36B gauge work? Well, I classify this as a variable, big, variable gauge with a reference, so that it, it's a comparative gauge that indicates how much the part deviates from the standard that the gauge was set to. So the gauge is adjustable to various sizes and will adjust it to measure a specific size based on the nominal master. It incorporates a, a reference stop to help position or lock the part into a repeatable place for measurement. Therefore, once it's set up, it requires little operator skill making it fast and easy to use. And the nice thing about these types of gauges, these variable gauges, is that they have lots of adjustability in their range, but they have a very limited measuring range so that the operator doesn't have too much influence when making these measurements with these types of gauges. They're going to provide actual deviations. Well, if you use a digital readout, you can also use that to present the actual part size. And because they provide deviations, you can get that variable information and do something with it. So once it's set up with the master, you can now start making measurements and learn about the process trends and maybe diagnose manufacturing uh, issues. 
And you know you can spend some money on a, a 36B gauge. It's a, it's a it's a significant investment, but a gauge like this can last for decades when it's well maintained. So if we're looking at a performance chart uh, for uh, IDOD gauges or gauges used for making measurements. I class this as the almost the best, but uh, just a little bit below that. You can see I've, I've boxed off here the adjustable variable gauge with the reference. So this is a better than, say, a uh, an adjustable bore gauge, which doesn't have a reference to where the operator has to swing it through looking for um, the, the minimum diameter, for example. And it's a lot better than, say, a... Uh, a micrometer or a caliper that has lots of uh, operator influence on making those measurements. So it's a couple of, of steps above hand tools, not quite as good as a, uh, a fixed plug gauge like an air gauge or a Dimetron plug or something like that. But because you can adjust this to a specific size, um, you have a reference in there to kind of lock the part into position you can have all the things that you need. You have some good versatility. It's very easy to use, little operator influence, and you can get high performance measurements out of it. This is a little comparison of, again, showing you that the increased measurement uncertainty that uh, a 36B gauge or these types of variable gauges with reference have over calipers or micrometers. Because there's less operator influence, there's less variability, uh, there's less adjustability once it's set to a specific size, you'll get better performance and less uh, uncertainty out of your, your measurement. So this is a way to take the, uh, the measurement at the point of manufacture up a notch and get better performance. Now, the first 36B gauges were introduced in the late 1930s, and they were, you know, a very, a very popular gauge at the point of manufacture, and they were highly sought after in the bearing industry. We, there, there were thousands and thousands of 36B gauges uh, sold into the bearing industries in the 40s and 50s. Um, so it's been produced for a long time. But internally, we have basically the same design, the same features. Uh, basically, the only difference today is that you can see here that these look like they have a, a fixed base, where today's gauge is, uh, has an adjustable base. So back then, you had to live with the specific angle, the part resting at an angle, and, and sometimes for heavy parts, then that might be a problem. So today with the adjustable base, uh, we have a little bit better performance. And like I said, at that time, they were still you know, a pretty good investment, but they have lasted uh, decades uh, when maintained. And in fact, since we use the same mechanism today, you know, we repair gauges that are 40, 50, 60 years old because uh, the mechanism is the same, the casting is still good, the plates are still interchangeable. So, you know, we can still take an old gauge, refurbish it, and still get the same type of performance that when that gauge was originally manufactured, say, 50 years ago. So it's quite a testament to the original design of the 36B gauge. So what are some of the secrets of the 36B gauge's success? Well, probably the, the biggest one is its friction-free transfer mechanism, which is based on a reed spring-based pantograph. So with a, with a reed spring, you have four springs, and there's no bearings, there's no sliding motions. The springs are, are basically bending to, a, to the force that's applied here. So this Panograph is built into the gauge, and here's the, the reed springs from the side view, and a force is applied here, whether it be uh, the deviation of the part that we're, we're trying to measure. 
So what happens is we have this friction-free uh, pantograph assembly. The forces can go left or right in this uh, specific example, and we are measuring this top plate as it moves side to side. So the panel spring allows for friction-free movement basically in a straight line. And these are very stiff, very repeatable. They're not susceptible to dirt or contamination uh, or wear over time. These, these reed springs, again, because they're uh, there are springs, there's limited travel that's available. We do use stops where you can't over travel them and so forth. Uh, these springs can basically last forever. Another, another secret of the 36B gauge success is that the part sits on the rest pads. It doesn't sit on the table's plates. So what does this do? This gives us a good, solid three-point support of the part. The part's not going to rock if that part is not flat. And the, the table plate, in this case, does not need to be precision ground. So you can see, you know, taking a close look here, the part is actually sitting on the top of the jaws. We, you can see that there's some... Um, some marks here that allow the jaws to be set up a little bit faster. And whether we're measuring an OD measurement or an ID measurement, the part is sitting on the top of the jaws. It's not resting on the plate. The plate is there just basically to protect the internal mechanism. And it's easy to change the gauge from an inside diameter to an outside di uh, measurement by rotating the top plate. Basically what you do is you take off four screws here and you rotate the plate to go from a, an ID measurement to an OD measurement. Another secret of the success is that it comes in two styles. A T-plate version, which is basically a two-point contact that allows us to, to, uh, to measure parts that have even number of lobes. And we have a, a V-plate, which has three contacts for uh, parts that have an odd number of lobes. So you can see here's a T-plate version, um, the smaller V-plate, and the larger V and T-plates. Take a little closer look at each one of those. So for the T-plate version, measuring the even number of lobes, you now we're doing two-point contacts. We have a, a, reference, a reference contact and a, a sensitive contact down here. Now you can use the gauge as a two-point measuring system without the reference. And of course, you would want to swing the part side to side to capture the, the highest um, reading. But with the 36B gauge, we have the reference contact on the side. So we would adjust the reference contact to be just a little bit smaller than the, uh, the, the expected smallest inside diameter so that it will act as a reference and the part can be just put on there, referenced against the, uh, the reference contact, and now we can get the, uh, the ID measurement. Two-point uh, two-point method. Now, you know, depending on the size, you might want to swing through this because uh, with the smaller the diameter, the larger um, variation we could see because based on the diameter. But for larger diameters, you can pretty much set the reference to capture the the diameter in a two-point method. So these are your typical jaw positions that you might have with a uh, an ID measurement uh, and the, the T plate positions. You can see that again, the part is sitting on the reference jaw, and you have your actual contacts making the the diameter checks. Um, you can rotate these around for your very large diameters to sit on the outside of the jaws for the largest parts. For most ODs, you're going to again have it sitting on the large area of the jaws acting as the reference. 
And for very small ODs, again, you could have it sit on the outside or the very small part of the jaws. So lots of versatility and applications for measuring two-point measurement. Now the, the V-plate design is for parts with an odd number of lobes. So you know that when you have a, a part that has an odd number of lobes, like we have three lobes here, and you try to measure it with a two-point measuring system, all you're going to see is the same size. You won't see this out of round condition where you have these three lobes here. So that's why you have to go to a, you have to know about the part form, maybe do a little test on a, on a roundness machine, for example. And then if you know that you have an odd number of lobes, then you would go with a V plate design and there are 36 B gauge. So, you know, we have a, the, the concept here where we have two fixed contacts and a sensitive contact measuring the internal diameter. And we're really not measuring the diameter, we're really measuring this actual cord or distance here based on what the cord is doing between two, these two uh, reference contacts. Or the same thing happens with an external diameter. We're measuring over this cord length here. So because we're measuring against this, uh, this cord change, it's really not a true diameter. So we're going to have to have a special compensated indicator uh, to make to be used with a 36B gauge uh, and the uh, the three point measurement. But again, if you have if you know you have a part that has an odd number of lobes to it, the 36B gauge with the V plate is the one that you're going to want to choose. There's the same type of type of jaw arrangement even with the V plate. We're always going to be resting the part on the jaw faces uh, rather than the tabletop. Again, this allows for better support. You don't have to worry about a flat plate, and it can offer a little bit longer life of, of the, the gauge itself. So the secret of the success is this comes down to the, the jaws itself. Now we said that the part is going to rest on the flat part of the jaw and the contacts, they have the ability to be adjusted for various heights. And these are the, the items that are really taking the wearability out of the gauge. It's easy to replace the jaws. It could be very difficult to replace uh, flat surfaces if you were trying to measure off the, the tabletop itself. And even for, for even higher wear applications, we can provide jaws that have a TC wear pad or tungsten carbide wear pad that really increases the, the life of the jaws. So these jaws are another secret to the success of the 36B gauges. But we also have made the jaws interchangeable with the MAR 844T portable IDOD gauge. So we have uh, jaws now that have the matching diameter that can take the various contacts that we use in our 844T gauge and just interchange them for measuring, again, different diameters or uh, measuring into gears, for example, or measuring into grooves, et cetera, where we can measure using the standard contacts and increase the versatility of the 36B gauge. So again, there's lots of different uh, applications where we can use the 36B gauge, you know, a plain straight ID uh, or an OD, whether it be a through or a blind hole, we can use the 36B gauge to measure these applications. We've made so we call pie plates for when you have a soft or a thin walled part or a little cap or something that you want to, to measure by making the, the contacts almost the size of the part. We're not going to influence the, the readings that much and we can measure those, those thin wall parts. 
We can make special contacts for measuring splines and gears. Uh, we can have uh, the gauge we said has lots of retraction. We can even add more retraction if needed uh, to get over those, those splines and into the gears and so forth. Now most of the, like I said, the 36B gauge was was often used and maybe designed primarily for the bearing industry. So with its long retraction, you now we can get into uh, into the races of the IDs and the ODs. So um, we can make special jaws that might have the the the, the correct the ball diameter for measuring the ID or OD races. Uh, we can take a 36B gauge and add a, a second probe and, and measure wall thickness now of those types of gauges. So we can measure wallness, which is basically the concentricity of the ID to the OD. So you, know, you can take a standard gauge and make it do, use it as the base for doing a lot of different types of checks. So why would you need a 36B gauge? Well, it's designed for versatility. It's adjustable to a lot of sizes. It can measure IDs and ODs from the same gauge. It's meant to be used on the shop floor at the point of manufacture because there's really no moving parts. It's not that susceptible to dirt and contamination. Uh, there's no bearings to get uh, fouled up with dirt and oil. It's that reed spring mechanism is what is the strength of the success story behind the 36B gauge. Because it's a variable gauge with uh, the reference, it's very easy uh, to use with very little operator skill, and you can get fast, high performance results. Being a gauge allows for two or three point measuring. You can, knowing what your part form is, you can get the best results and ensure that uh, you're making the right diameter check and your parts are going to, to uh, uh, go together properly. You can get the actual deviations, which is important for any statistical control that you want to do. And you're dig using a digital readout, you can get the uh, preset, the actual value for that size. Uh, data collection is a very possible because this is a variable gauge. One master is, is used for setting the nominal size. And again, you take, you take uh, minimum care of this gauge and it'll last for decades. The great thing about this is that it's the, the April product of the month. Uh, we have a special promotion going on with three of our most popular models at a really special price uh, where we can uh, provide the gauge to measure the two point. This is our standard gauges for two or three point measurement. Plus we're offering one that has a combination of the, the T or the V plate uh, to allow you to do more versatility depending on the part types that you might have. So the three gauges that we have is the, the T-plate version, which can measure uh, IDs from 0.75 inches to three and a half inches, or ODs from a quarter of an inch to five inches. It comes with our dial indicator with a one-tenth inch resolution. This is our standard model 36B-10, and it's a great price at $2,500. The V-plate version goes from 0 0.1, 0 0.8 uh, inches through to 4.6 inches IDs, and from 0.3 to 5 inches ODs, again provided with a dial indicator having a uh, one-tenth resolution. And we have the version here, which is the, the, the uh, Again, the model 36B gauge, but we're providing it with a digital readout that includes uh, the T-plate and the V-plate to design. It has the 1087BR digital indicator, which has the ability to compensate for the V-plate. You can get actual sizes. You can put it into dynamic mode for looking for the max or min values as you sweep the part 
uh, through the measuring process. It has our MARC Connect output where you can get USB, Digimatic, or RS-232 depending on the cable that's, that's plugged into it. It has the normal reverse polarity for reading IDs and ODs. So you get the most versatility out of this style gauge in one package. And again, because it's the April product of the month, you order one of these gauges, you're going to get a free MAR mug as part of the promotion. So today I've tried to cover the, uh, the 36B IDOD gauges and their long and successful history. Uh, MAR has been building these gauges since the 30s, built tens of thousands of them, and, and most of them are still out in the field making successful measurements. There's lots of features built into the product. It has great versatility for different sizes, has different accessories for different measurement applications, and it's the right choice for inspection at the point of manufacture. It's easy for the operator to use, and it's easy for them to get very good, fast results. And because it's Mars product of the month, it's a super value. And why choose MAR for your gauging needs? Well, we have a broad range of products for industrial metrology. We have the application competence support you. MAR's here to answer your phone calls. We have a large wireless hand tool portfolio that can be, be used with the 36B gauges or, or other gauges that we have out there. And we have promotion prices and high quality to achieve the best of value to you. So again, if you had any questions uh, for me during the webinar, feel free to use the, uh, the chat mode to, uh, to send those in. Uh, after the, uh, uh, the webinar is over, we'll send you a link to the recording of this webinar, information about the product of the month data sheet in the PDF format, and we'll answer any questions that you might have uh, had during the webinar. So again, thank you for your attention today. Thank you for, uh, for following the, the MAR webinars about the product of the month and our other product features. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you again.